Welcome back to the North American Star League Season 4 Grand Finals, and welcome back to game number three, Hero versus Violet. We'll be moving over to the Cloud Kingdom. Cloud Kingdom is a map that I think Hero is going to feel a little bit more comfortable on than the first two. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Ben, how is he going to play? Is it going to be another two-base play? I don't think so. It's something that Hero does very rarely. He almost got away with it, but Violet showed that he knows how to deal with those kind of plays. I think the Overlord Scout was so crucial. Just to have that count, just to see it a little bit quicker, even if it's only 10 or 15 seconds mm -hmm. for a Zerg, it's so massive. Yeah, every little indication, of course, that little poke up the ramp with the Zerglings, too. Yep. Uh, spotting that Immortal, if there was any doubt, that allowed Violet to proceed forward with certainty. As soon as the players say that they're ready, we will start this third map. Third map in this best of seven. Players are ready, Ben, so I'm going to fire it up. Game number three is going to be played on Cloud Kingdom. Ooh, someone just left. Okay, we can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it is still going to be playing on Cloud Kingdom. <laughs> NSL admin jumping out of the game right before we started the timer. <laughs> now $30,000 is up for grabs. The first place finisher will take home that big check. The second place finisher... 15,000 bucks. And that cute trophy. And that cute trophy. I want to touch it, but like, you I've learned you, like, that. smudge it up with your fingerprints? Not uh, that as well, but they also say like you can jinx it and stuff. So I don't oh, know. Yeah. You know, whenever I go to a Blizzard event, Mark always never lets me touch the trophy. Because <laughs> he said I would jinx it. I was like, come on, Mark. <laughs> Why would you say that? Reminds me of Carmack <laughs> and his uh, sick nerd baller sweatshirts. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's so proud of them. <laughs> he's like, you can watch it, you can look at it, but you cannot wear it. I was like, well, I was not really going to wear it. Even though I wonder how it would look, he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carmack. Welcome to the Cloud Kingdom and to game number three, Violet versus Hero, spawning down in the bottom left-hand corner of Cloud Kingdom. The Red Zerg leading 2-0, Azubu Violet. <laughs> and his opponent, who has looked damn near unstoppable all weekend long, has finally met perhaps his match. Spawning in the top right, the Blue Protoss player, Liquid Hero. Hero was our only Protoss at the final ban, and still is, of course, and he's also the only player to make it back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back finals. He was at our finals in Season 2, which was our first season. He was the runner-up back then, so he already has that silver medal. Losing in a nail-biting series against Puma last season, made it to the quarterfinals, where he lost against the uh, later... Actually, he only lost against champions. Since last year, he lost against mm -hmm. Stefano. Now he's in the final once more. Uh, that's already a fantastic achievement, but I'm sure that Hero wants more. Of course he does. The Christmas toss. He's no. going to switch it up once more a little bit, man, getting the first pilot in his main base, just making it a little bit harder for Zerg later on to figure out what exactly is going on. It is still going to be a Nexus first, though, so he is not afraid. Not at all. To take a stand. Um, Violet is playing pretty standard. Then you're supposed to say, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I don't know the words to these songs. I, 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 we just you, you, you only know Johnny Cash songs. Uh, it's nothing wrong. Johnny Cash is the man. <laughs> How many people here like Johnny Cash? See? Okay. I'm not in the minority. <laughs> He's awesome. Boy yeah. Named Sue was the, my first record. Boy Just Named Sue? Yeah, man. <laughs> That's kind of sad. As my you're name is Sue. <laughs> How do you do? I don't know, Ben. I guess I'm going to have to learn more about that southern culture you come <laughs> from <laughs> in the upcoming weeks. Uh, looking forward to it, brother. Um, where's the Forge? Forge is up in the main base. So we do see Hero going Nexus first into Forge and then Gateway and then Cannon. It's a very nice economical opening. Just two links so far on Violet. Violet never really making a lot of links. There are quite some Zergs out there who really love to mix it up and just throw in six to eight links every now and then. Just run across the map, see if they can uh, make their way into the main base. Of course, the Forge player that we always think of is Nurture, who somehow has like a guaranteed uh, access ticket to the Protoss base. He yep. always gets the links in. No one else does. He walks across the map and kills four probes every game. It's yes. just part of his opening. <laughs> That's how uh, Nurture's EVP built stuff. into the build. Oh, okay, if you build 13 spawning pool and then you kill six probes. <laughs> uh, what? what? Nurture? No, it's, it's... It doesn't even work mid-mossy. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nurture. 
Uh, Hero gets a good scout off, knows that there is a third base down, and that's all he needs before he's going to just kind of walk back home and start working on his mid-game. This is already a little bit more tricky. Once more for the people who wonder, why is that pylon over there? Why wouldn't you just build it here? That's of course, has everything to do with this little cliff. This overlord is always lurking around. And if you build your entire uh, attack here, if you build the forge here, if you build the seminary score here, uh, Zerg can basically see what you spend your chrono boost on, if you're researching plus one or not. And in this case, you just make them a little bit more paranoid. And that's always good. Even if you if you're not going to transition into something crazy. I would love to see Hero play Stargate, by the way, Ben, and I might actually have a Stargate feeling. I think Stargate is quite good on Cloud Kingdom, and I've always enjoyed watching Hero Stargate play. Yeah. StarCraft II, a game of small things and small advantages, and anytime you can do just this, the tiniest thing to create an advantage for yourself, you should. Plus one does start spinning here for Hero, and as you pointed out, Violet's going to have no idea because while he does know where the Forge is, he's not able to look at it. Both players always having exactly 16 workers on their mineral in the early stages of the game, so making sure they mine optimally, getting as many resources as possible. Yes, sir. And uh, a lot of Chrono Boost being spent on this warp gate. Do you think this uh, indicates anything, or is it just kind of mm. normal at this phase? No, it might be a little bit of t uh, four gate plus one pressure, not necessarily only. We see two additional gates being warped in. Oh, three three additional gates being warped in, so it might just be some four gate plus one. Uh, a very normal build on this map, I would say. I think players love trying mm -hmm. to do some four-gate pressure on this third base. We see Hero's actually clearing out the top path with his Stalker. I really wonder if Violet will actually saw that probe leaving or not. Tried to switch over to his vision, but it was a little bit too late. Uh, that is going to be uh, crucial, because as you said, Ben, this Stalker has been pretty much clearing out everything on this top side of the map. It's going to scare away these Zerglings now as well, or just push them as far away as possible. Taking a look at the work count right now, we see Violet at 46 drones, so oh that's why he wants oh one more attention. Links on the Zelnaga Tower are going to spot this probe. That's actually huge, and uh, that should prompt a reaction from Still Violet. Though. Man, he even sees the pylon. I mean, he's going to make only units from now on, so I guess he is going to be okay. But speed is still far way off, and the Roach Run is only halfway done. These links will fall. This is still going to be a little bit tricky, Ben. He's going to have to make sure that he doesn't take a terrible fight, because there will be plus one on the Zealots of Hero. Yeah, four Zealots warped in off that first pylon in the middle of the map, and a second oh, pylon down this. outside the third base. Oh, Violet's going to have to be super careful, Ben. He cannot take a bad fight, where he's going to lose his first initial 16 links without killing any units. Uh, and he might be forced to do so. Plus one's about to finish, and when it does, he's going to find that it's uh, going to be a very difficult fight against these Zealous. Stalkers are just going to retreat right back to this reinforcing pylon. Spine crawlers have finished. That's going to help out a ton. Yeah, one spine crawler will fall, though, pretty much immediately. But there's one more spine, and now 12 roaches are on the way. But how much damage will all these Zealots do oh, before those roaches are here? Maybe a lot of damage. This spine's going to go down very quickly. Queen is also going to fall. Drones being pulled, and they're going to fight. Uh, Can Hero, oh, I don't think he'll kill the hat but he's definitely going to get some drone kills. Yep, 50 workers against 50 workers right now. Maybe get a couple of roaches as well. Violet, of course, losing a lot of precious mining time. Wow, this is actually going really nicely for Violet. Here, not doing as much damage as they thought he would. Only three drones have gone down, and Violet phenomenally recognizes what's happening and repels that attack. Uh, he still lost quite a bit, though, Ben. If you take a look at the unit's lost resource there, we can see Violet lost a little bit more. This pylon is still up. I'm not sure if Violet is aware of it. And also, he has the uh, he has no worker lead. It's 46 drones yep. to 52 probes. It's so that is so close. If a hero wipes in three more zealots over here and this runs him, oh, okay, pilot is aware of that. Excellent play. Yep. Catches it, kills the probe, kills or will kill the pylon. I think it's pretty interesting, Kev. Here we are on Cloud Kingdom, our third map in this best of seven series, and we still haven't really had a chance to gauge the infested yeah, changes. Like We've never really seen. First game was actually going to be like that game. Is this push now going to work? Normally it would be tough. It was going to work. I thought it might have worked, but as Hero forgot those Colossus on Daybreak, we kind of really didn't get to see it. Uh, Hero is kind of moving into the mid game with a, in a decent position. I wouldn't say that he's ahead by any stretch, no. but I would say that he's uh. even, even at least. Stalker stays alive as well, but still, Ben, this is only 10 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. Now he is getting expand. Now, on Daybreak, I said I thought it was slow when he opened up with the Robo, but we should forget, now he actually did way more damage than he did with the Warp Prism than he, uh, on Daybreak. Yeah, yeah, killing a queen, forcing a lot of units, yeah. and uh, delaying the fact the, the delaying Violet's ability to really drone up. Now yeah. Violet does have the worker lead, but just barely, 67 probes 
or 67 drones. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it was just 60 to 57, but uh, 10 more drones just hatched. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, Valet is starting to lengthen that advantage. Road speed is halfway done, but Blink is about going to finish up before road speed is even done. There is a cannon over here, and of course, there are plenty of uh, sentries. Uh, taking a look at Hero's Vision, his first observer right now just making his way across the map. If Violet decides to be very aggressive, observers would be key, but it's not going to be the case. As we saw Violet still making drones. He's up to 74 drones right now. He's well aware of exactly what's happening. Nice activity with his Zergling. Sees the third base, sees the army of Hero, knows exactly the army composition that he's dealing with. Hero does drop the robotics bay. I think it's pretty interesting that we haven't yeah. seen him really think about Templar tech thus far in these... PVZ series? Not yet. I think it just depends so much on how early game plays out and uh, what he's going to see as well. Uh, but I can blame him to fall back on the Colossus. I would probably do the same thing in this uh, state of ZVP, see if it made any changes or not. Hero gets a good scout off with the Observer, sees pretty much the entire tech, and of course he's like, ah, okay, okay, nothing crazy, no Hive tech on the way yet. So if I'm going to try to go for a Colossus timing, I might be able to hit before Broodlords. Oh! Oof! No. Observer does get shut down. That means that Hero will be playing in the dark, at least for now. It's always sad when the units that can't fight back die, Ben. It's unfair, man. <laughs> I was just sitting here checking it all out, man. man I would have lived. You could have just told me to. Hero's going to push out with a couple of stalkers. Fortunately for him, he does have blink, so um, he doesn't have to worry about being surrounded and whatnot. Unlike his game against Bolt in <laughs> on Cloud Kingdom as well. You should really talk to Blizzard about the Kamikaze upgrade for the Observer. <laughs> that would be kind of cool, right? <laughs> You know he's going to go down and he just <laughs> takes somebody else with him. Crash yeah, into any a unit of your unit. choice and do 500 damage. Yes. <laughs> Send like, like Observer is going to be the ultimate counter against Brutal Lords. <laughs> Change the name of Observer <laughs> to Cruise Missile. Like, the best thing is you have the Observer speed as well, so they're going to be so quick. <laughs> <laughs> with Observer speed, it does 1,000 damage. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that uh, we can talk Dustin Browder into this. <laughs> I, ho I do hope that he likes to drink, though. Otherwise, it's going to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right now, Violet just kind of uh, b controlling the center of the map, keeping his opponent in the dark as Hero is content to just sit back. Templar Archives does go down. He's getting charged. He's getting his plus three weapons upgrade. This is a little bit similar to Daybreak so far, Ben, uh, but I, I like Hero's position once more. Hive is almost done, but still, if Hero is going to move out real soon, he has two Colossus. He could make one more. Uh, he's doing that right now. It's in production. I think he could hit a pretty nasty uh, timing. It's going to be close if he really wants to fight before the Brutalists are out, but I think he could do it, and I'm so curious to see how that battle is going to unfold. Yeah, uh, Colossus count will be three in just a moment, and uh, Plus three is going to be ready as well. The Stalkers, the Sentries, the Immortals, and a handful of Zealots. Yeah, probably an Archon or two as well. He is once more pretending like he wants to take a forward base, but that's exactly what he did on Daybreak as well, and then he not actually, uh, didn't actually take it. Yep, just pushed with... Uh, with his very absent-minded Colossi. Stalker count is up to 25 right now. That's a very, very nice count. It's going to be hard for Violet to take it out. He has eight Corruptors. But of course, Violet's going to have to worry as well, Ben. If he goes full Brutalert right now, is he going to be able to kill those Colossus? Yeah, uh, it's going to be hard, certainly with this many Stalkers on the field. 25 Stalkers. That's so many Stalkers. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a minimal investment in Zealots and in, uh, in Colossi, and instead okay. sending most of those resources to, uh. the, to the Stalker, to the Blink Stalker. Pretty similar to Daybreak, Ben, and now we're going to see once more his hero uh, going to pay better attention to his army. Oh, the Colossus once more a little bit exposed. Fortunately, those uh, Infestors and Corruptors were not there yet. This is going to be it. Hero is 14 more Roaches right now. Violet is not going to bank on Broodlords for this fight, Ben. He's just going to use the Corruptors to deal with the Colossus instead. Oh, look oh, at the Colossus Fungal. range. Fungal does catch a couple of Colossi, but the Infested Terran's not really able to get into the mix at all. Oh. Corruptors doing a good job dealing no, damage. Pick oh, up. great micro. Hot pickup in the War Prism, and Hero keeps one Colossus alive. That's a massive pickup, Ben, because with only one Colossus, this army is suddenly a whole lot less intimidating. You're absolutely right. 180 supply for either one of these players. We still have seen not a single Broodlord, and a lot of Infestors died in that initial skirmish. Only five remain. Yep, so many Stalkers. It's almost a ridiculous amount, and there are only, as far as I know, six, only fi five Infestors left right now. That's exactly right. Corruptors do come in, but oh. the Colossi are doing so much damage. The Corruptors all die before the Colossi go down. And Violet's forced to fall back on Infested Terrans, but Hero doesn't have to fight this. He could just back up. Instead, he's going to force field and with more Great War Prism Micro, keeping the Colossi alive even still. Wow. And great focus fire on the Corruptors as oh, well. All the Hero. Corruptors did die. You show off, you. Drones being pulled off the line. They're going to be roasted. Roaches can't get in the fight. Immortals doing great work. GG, Hero takes Cloud Kingdom.
Oh. oh, we have a series on our hands yet. Kevin, Hero answers back. Violet winning the first two maps, but Hero says, I'm not dead yet. Far from it, really beautiful game from Hero. Once more, but I love the way that he uses those war prisms later on. Like I've seen it with Immortals in the Immortal Center push, but even now, keeping that second Colossus alive, I think was really crucial. If that one falls, suddenly it's a whole lot harder to deal with all those infested Terrans. So beautiful micro by Hero, and I just love the opening, you know, busting out the old 4 gate plus one, dealing quite a bit of damage, not crippling damage, but still doing enough that it justifies taking it to third base on 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, Hero just looked great, guys. That last map brought to you by Cooler Map and their fine line of gaming peripherals, including mice, keyboards, cases, and more. Head on over to coolermaster-usa.com to check them out. We're going to take a very short break. Game number four, mm -hmm. Hero versus Violet, will be coming up right after this.